There's a million different tips out there for how to grow carpeting plants in your aquarium, but in this video, I'm gonna share with you how you can ignore 99% of them if you just pick one specific plant. In this little tank right here, we are not using high light. We're not using any CO2. We do have a nutrient absorbing substrate. We're not adding any fertilizer, but we still have a super dope carpet that looks great. For those that are just here to find out what the plant is and then dip, it is Eleocharis parluva dwarf hair grass. It is, I think, the best plant to use for pretty much everybody in the planted aquarium world who wants to grow a carpet and have the least amount of work and worry and money to put in to get what you want out of it. But there's of course more to the story and we didn't get to here with zero work. So let's talk a little bit more about it. Wow, that tank looks really bad on camera. Let me, let me juice this up a little bit. That looks a little bit better. That is the ONF little flat nano light on 100% usually run it on 30 and that's why it looks so dark. Let's go over the really easy sort of like stereotypical tips that you're gonna find everywhere on the internet when it comes to growing a carpet. The number one thing you're probably gonna hear is high light paired with CO2, paired with a good substrate, like a nutrient rich substrate. And then you're also gonna hear adding fertilizers to the tank. I think that makes four things and they're all not wrong. There are, those are all things that you can do to pretty much any planted tank depending on the plants that you have in it, of course, um, to increase the growth rate of the plants in the tank. And I think that most people jump to those four things because they're just kind of the most obvious from a plant growth perspective. And if you do all those things and they work and things are balanced, then you'll allow more or less of a high demanding plant to take advantage of them and then grow and fill in the carpet. There's also things like temperature. I don't hear people talk about that a lot. So if your tank is let's say 72 degrees or 70 degrees, those plants in that tank, whatever they are, not just carpet plants, they're not gonna grow as fast as a tank that is say running at like 82 degrees. It's just biochemistry and physics kind of melded into one thing. The warmer the temperature, the faster metabolism can go, etc., cetera, et cetera. But I don't think you should get that crazy into it and start intentionally running a tank hotter to get plants to grow faster. If that's your thing, I totally get it. I was a plant nerd, like major plant nerd like that for a long time, so I get it. But I don't think the average aquarist should really spend too much time on all of these things combined, unless you really want to. But let's face it, you want to have a carpet in your tank, and I think most people just need to be pushed in the right direction of the right plant. It's easy to get distracted with all the different plants out there. You have dwarf baby tears. You should probably stay away from that, especially if you're new. There's Monte Carlo, a little bit easier, but you run into some issues and a little bit of special care needed if you wanna have a really good carpet. There's other high demanding plants like Glossostigma. I did a carpet of this a long time ago. It required me to basically do a dry start method on the tank. There's all of these little nuances and extra work that you're gonna to have to do to get a particular type of carpeting plant to do well. But you don't have to do any of these things, in my experience, if you just use good old dwarf hair grass. I think honestly the most important thing when it comes to a carpet, a carpet of dwarf hair grass or any carpet for that matter, is the time factor. And I know that's a super lame answer and probably not many people wanna hear that, but it's true. This tank right here is probably about a year old. Now it didn't take a year for the dwarf hair grass to getting to looking like this, but it did take a few months at least. And that's really just because we didn't add a bunch of extra things to the tank. We didn't add CO2. We never ran excessive lighting on it or tried to push it too hard. I never cared about the temperature of the tank. I never added fertilizer to it. Just the fish food that I was putting in, that was all the nutrient that got added to the system. And so when you do that sort of El Natural type setup, then things are gonna take a little bit longer than maybe you want. You might hear some people on the internet from time to time talk about how they were able to get this awesome dwarf baby tears carpet without CO2, without highlights, just in like a super run of the mill tank. I'm not gonna totally say those people are completely lying, but I think they might be leaving a few things out. That's all. If you stick with dwarf hair grass, if you like the look of this plant and you want a carpet in your tank, then this is the plant for you. Of course, doing things like adding CO2 having a stronger light source like we have right now, and then adding a fertilizer from time to time to increase the nitrogen and the potassium in the aquarium is all gonna help the plants grow faster and carpet and spread better. But the point here is that it's not necessary 
as long as you have the time component. As long as you can be patient, you will get your carpet and it'll, it'll probably happen sooner than you think. Now let's talk a little bit more specifically about dwarf hair grass because there's a few other things that I wanna include here that I think are relevant. When using dwarf hair grass, I highly recommend you use a tissue culture of it. This is kind of weird, at least me hearing myself say it, because with most plants, I don't recommend tissue cultures, but here's why. I find that when it comes to stem plants, I have a much harder time getting those to adapt back to an aquatic environment, and thus, um, I have a higher percentage of loss when I start a stem plant in a tissue culture and move it into a tank. But with dwarf hair grass and other hair grass like plants, I don't have that effect and I actually see the opposite. So I've done it a lot of times where I start with a hair grass that is supposed to be dwarf hair grass. I get it from the farm. This is different than when you go and buy it on like a retail website, for example, but I find that uh, a lot of times I get roots that are damaged and then they end up not doing well in the tank. Not saying that's gonna happen to you specifically, but this is why I stick with the tissue cultures. The tissue cultures also are really easy to parse out and you get a bunch of different plugs of the grass and that's how you go and plant it. So you're gonna take your little plugs, you're gonna sprinkle them around the aquarium, leave a little bit of space in between them and then just let time do its thing. Before you know it, and what I mean by that is, you know, two, three, four months, maybe a little bit longer, depending, you're gonna end up with a tank that has a bunch of hair grass and a really nice carpet. As I mentioned before, we went the slow route with this one and we didn't use any fancy add-ons or extra nutrient in the tank to get the carpet. We just let time do its thing and we got there. The tank filled out, it's nice and bushy, everything's cool, and now I'm in a state where the plant is in kind of stasis mode, as I like to call it. There's a tactic that I talked about before with the Monte Carlo trees specifically, is that you start with you know doing things like making sure you have good lighting, CO2, things like that, but then once the plant gets really established and, and put itself in a position where it's been thriving for a while, then you start to dial those things back. And that can be a really good method that you can use with the hair grass if you want it to grow fast, and then just pull that CO2, reduce the lighting, sort of gradually over time. You don't have to be, you know, you don't have to baby it or anything, but you can do stuff like that to eventually get it to a point where you're using really low light, you're pairing it with other low light plants, and then it's just in that stasis mode where it's super low maintenance, it still looks awesome. And this is the perfect place to be because it can equal like a super low maintenance tank for you. There's other components to the aquarium than just the carpet, but I don't have to do anything to keep the grass looking like this. It's filled out so much that I think hormonal signals either in the roots or in the blades of grass or both tell the plant that it's taken up all the space that it can and so it doesn't try and actively grow and get crazy on me. So that means I don't have to trim it, I don't have to do anything to keep it green, it's not gonna die off on me, it's just happy where it is and it, it's really just chilling. And because it's just chilling, I can turn the lights way down low on this thing. Yes, it's not gonna look good on camera, but in person, it looks just fine. My fish's coloration does suffer a little bit when the lights are so low because it's just, you know, it's not reflecting as much light and making them pop as well. But everything else is the way I want it, so that's okay for me. This is a small tank, and I think a question you might have is, well, what if I'm trying to do like a 50 or 60 gallon or 75 or something like that? Well then I would recommend that you start with more hair grass so that you can cover the entire area that you want to have grass. And then if you do have the budget for it and the want to do it, then go with something like CO2 because that is gonna help you a lot more than just adding fertilizer or just turning the lights way up, which can throw off the balance of the tank a little bit more easily. I guess the last thing that I didn't talk about too much was the substrate. So I mentioned that we do have a nutrient absorbing substrate in here. I can't remember if it's the UN Contra soil or it's, it's probably a mix of a bunch of different stuff, but that is the one thing that we do have in here that's different than say like a sand. But honestly, I'm not super sold on the fact that you couldn't achieve a carpet like this with sand. It might take it a little bit longer to do so, but I don't think it's a deal breaker by any means. Actually, maybe, that, maybe that's a good idea for a side-by-side -side comparison experiment video is do something like dwarf hair grass and see the, just the difference between sand and a nutrient rich or an active substrate. Let me know what you think of that. But I will say, if the sand is too fine and it's packed too tight, then you might have an issue with the root spread. Uh, I might be kind of making stuff up now because I can't really say for sure. But just keep that in mind. If you really want to promote this stuff, then go with something 
like uh, fluval stratum, a UN contra soil, a tropica, just whatever you want. They have really good particle size that lends itself nice to the root development of plants like this. Um, so yeah, I think that is most of it. I guess at the end of the day, there's like four or five tips total, but they're not really relevant if you're using an awesome plant like dwarf hair grass. You get into the realm of dwarf baby tears or glossostigma, then you kind of have to pull out all the stops. You got to spend a lot of time thinking about it and making sure parameters are right with your setup. You know, you get your CO2, all that stuff. With this plant, you don't need to do it, but if you do do it, then it just speeds things up. So if time is on your side, if you have the patience for it, you want a carpet, use dwarf hair grass, you won't regret it. Let's feed our 20 or so ember tetras. You know we only feed them that legit nano, perfect size for our little guys in here. I know some of you guys probably don't even know that I started a fish food brand. I have not done a very good job at marketing it. It kind of happened at a weird time in my life. I called it legit for a reason. There's a bunch of reasons why, but if I could sum it up into one thing, it's that it is a super, super nutritional food for your fish. It's the least processed pellet fish food on the market. We know that processed foods or over-processed foods are not good for us. They're certainly not good for any of our animals, including fish. And it has sustainability in its roots. So not only the source material, the main ingredients for the food are sustainably harvested and they actually help the environment. The P.E. Mysis shrimp is an invasive species. Not only is it a powerhouse of a nutritional source for your fish, but removing it helps promote the healthy development of the salmon that live in the lakes in Canada where it's harvested from. We don't hit it with super high temperatures like pretty much every other fish food out there, so the ingredients are intact and bioavailable to the fish. And with every bag that we sell on our website, we donate 5% of the profits to Project Piaba. I wanted to include this component in the whole thing um, because I wanted to have more of an impact on the hobby. I wanna really try and build the best fish food company out there, and the only way I can do that is with your help. So try it out, you can try it out for free or go ahead and grab a bag and help support what I'm doing here. I'm bad at expressing gratitude. Thank you very much for all that you've given me so far and we'll just continue to try and do this thing. I'm really excited. Thank you once again. That's the end of my spiel. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you learned something. I hope it helped you and gave you kind of a direction to go in with the carpeting plants if that's something that you want to do. And if you have questions about a specific carpeting plant, I haven't grown all of them over the years, but I have a decent amount of experience with a handful of them. So drop it down below and I'll try and help you out. Thank you once again for watching guys and we'll see you in the next one.